Good evening. Welcome to the fifth midweek Lenten service for both Grace Lutheran and Providence Valley Lutheran churches. I am Pastor Johanna, and this evening I am giving thanks that we have the opportunity to worship together over the radio or on video. I also give thanks for Tammy and John Wagner as they are sponsoring uh, the radio broadcast this evening in honor of their family. I wanted you to note uh, that Grace Lutheran did make the difficult decision this week to close the church office um, in hopes that uh, everyone will stay home and stay healthy, um, but please note that the office is closed. If you need to uh, reach someone here on staff, uh, you still are able to call and we'll get a hold of somebody. We also continue to broadcast our worship services on Q921, both Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. And we are also opening up new opportunities for connection on our Facebook pages. So in addition to the Grace Lutheran Facebook page and the Providence Valley Lutheran Facebook page, we also have a Lenten study page, so that continues the Lenten study that we have been doing throughout Lent, called The Walk. We have a Providence and Grace Sunday School Facebook page, and we also have a Grace and Providence Faith Connection page, where there are resources and different activities to do um, and ways of connecting with one another. So please check those out. As a reminder, the food shelf is open on Tuesdays from 1 to 4. We are doing call-in orders only, so again, call ahead of time, and we'll have that order ready for you to be picked up. We continue to be a site for the student meal pickup up Monday through Friday from 11 to noon. And again, we have volunteers that are ready to assist you if you need help with grocery pickup or medicine pickup or financial assistance. So please do give the church office a call um, if some assistance with those things. And now we invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship by lighting a candle as we do the same here in our worship space.
our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. China uh, has uh, been in my wife Emily's 
family, family for three generations. Uh, Emily's uh, paternal grandparents uh, bought this after World War II in, I believe, Seattle, Washington, in this uh, China, used as a child with her two sisters and, and their family to celebrate holidays with Christmas and, and Easter and, and uh, 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 Thanksgiving, uh, Mother's Day, never Father's Day though, but always, always Mother's Day. Um, uh, they've been using this china for almost uh, 75 years, and so her father uh, gave it uh, to Emily a few years back, and so now it's been passed along to our family, and so we're able to use it for our holiday gatherings. And it has uh, an exceedingly high value to it because it was uh, made in Japan uh, while the United States were occupying Japan. So if you turn it over, it actually says, uh, 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 made in Japan under occupation. Um, it was um, made in uh, 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 1951. Uh, good quality Aladdin, and, uh, and so collectors that would uh, mean that it's very, very valuable because it's a very limited type of china that was made made in Japan. It's very unique, very limited. So we are excited to pass it down to our children when the time time comes. Now, in my family, we have a, a set of nice china too. It was uh, my parents' uh, china uh, that they uh, bought after they were married, um, and uh, it was uh, given to them. Uh, they used some money, and some of the pieces were given to them as uh, a wedding gift. My dad ended up giving uh, all of that china to uh, my spoiled bratty older brother Keith, but that's another point, that's another sermon we can talk about later. But we're excited to pass this set of china uh, along to our children. Uh, we have all of it, it's very fragile, I mean you can, you can almost see through it, it's like paper, but it's good quality china. And uh, none of it, through the years, through the 75 years that it's been in our family, none of it has broken. I mean we've never put it in the dishwasher, we've always washed it by hand, it's always been hand washed, and we still have all of the 12 sets of china, and we have all of the, the serving dishes. The serving dishes. So, uh, so uh, well, now there's one less piece. I apologize, uh, apologize for that. Um, that was not one piece of my family's china. I just wanted to uh, give you this point and use a dramatic way to give you this point for this message. Because here's the point, what a sad thing to possess one of the greatest gifts, a great treasure in our lives, and never share it, and never give it away. And this is precisely why scripture encourages us to share our faith with each other. Because you have been given an infinitely greater gift than even the set of dishes that have been given to my family. And this gift has been given to you by God through the work of the Holy Spirit. And it is the gift of faith. And you can identify it, you can cherish it, and you can use it. And it is crucial for your own destiny and the flourishing of your own family and also for the family of faith, for God's family, for the church. Not to use it, not to share your faith would be unthinkable. So the great question of life is, are you sharing the greatest gift that you have been given, your faith? And I'm sure you've heard that in the Gospel lesson, Jesus' words about sharing the light of Christ to others. And then Pastor Johanna this evening read the Apostle Paul's words when he said, For we are God's handiwork. We are what God has made us to be, created us in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand. God created in advance for us to do. We are made by God to share. We're often encouraged in our day to have 
a bucket list. Now, I don't know if you have a bucket list, but it's the things that we would like to do before the end of life. And usually these things are very expensive things. They're like expensive trips or very exotic experiences before we kick the bucket. Things like hang gliding or parachute diving or snorkeling. And it, it's kind of interesting, I was wondering where that saying come, come, came from, kick the bucket. Have you heard it? I'm sure you have. The Oxford English Dictionary says that most likely the bucket here in the phrase kick the bucket refers to the beam that a pig would be hung from by its feet when it is being slaughtered. So kicking the bucket was a pig's death. Now you are not a pig. You are a follower of Jesus. And you will not be a bucket kicker. We have it on the authority of Jesus himself. Death will not be the end of your experience, but death will be the beginning, the very beginning. And the real list that matters is not the things you do or the trips you take or the places you visit. It's the service that you offer. It is the things that you share. It's the things that you give to others that are a gift from God. God made you specifically to be able to do that in a unique way by giving you treasures through the Holy Spirit. And then God called you to share those things. And if anything, if anything in this pandemic that we find ourselves in, if we are going to survive it, we will have to survive it by sharing with one another. And we will have to share our faith in new ways with one another, to use this treasure that God has given us. Now, this is from 1 Peter. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do God's work. Now, I don't know what comes to your mind when you hear the word priest, the business about priests and what a priest does is very specific and it is very important. Now in the ancient world, priests were not so much like clergymen in our day. Among other things, there was no separation of church and state. So great leaders of state and people of great power were also priests in ancient times. Julius Caesar was not just Caesar. One of his titles was Pontifex Maximus, the Most High Priest. And it was a title of transcendent dignity and majesty. There was in Israel, as elsewhere in the ancient world, kind of a two-track system. There was the regular people track, and then there was a priest track. There was a holy place where only priests could go. There were prayers that only priests could say. There were sacrifices that only priests could offer. There were clothes that only priests could wear. There was forgiveness that only priests could offer. But then Jesus comes along, and Jesus changes everything. Jesus gave himself as the ultimate sacrifice on the cross for us, for you, and for me, for our forgiveness. So what priests had been pointing toward all along, Jesus ultimately and finally did. Now, you might think that would mean the end of the priesthood, that we don't need priests anymore, but it was actually exactly the opposite. 
It meant that now, in Jesus' community, everybody who follows Jesus is a priest. This became known through the reformer Martin Luther as the priesthood of all believers. Peter says in Holy Scripture, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. He says you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. In other words, there is no more a two-tier system. There's no more being divided up into professionals and amateurs, the priests and the non-priests. The term minister was never actually used in the early church for a group of special church leaders. It came from a word that was used for just waiting on tables or serving others. Everybody was a minister. Everybody was in the game. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit of God is in your life, and the Holy Spirit has given you a treasure, and that treasure in you is to be used. It is to be shared with and for others. And the good news is because we are image bearers of God, we have the DNA of sharing within us. It is embedded into us. Now, I remember when one of my kids was little, they had a pacifier, I don't know, probably nine months old, and they just wanted you to have the pacifier as well. Did you ever have a kid who wanted to share what they have? Uh, you're like, well, thank you, but, but no thank you. I don't need the pacifier that was just in your mouth. But the spirit of that DNA that we've been given, that when we love something, we want to give it away, just like that child. We have to give it away, or when we have something that is important, when we have something that is treasured, we want to give it away. We have that DNA because God's nature is to share. And when God's nature is in us, we are the same then we want to share, generation after generation after generation, to, the be, to be the people who share, who bear witness to this generous God. It just flows out of us. So this time, this time that we currently are in will not go down in history as devastating, it will no, not go down in history as being overwhelmingly tragic, but this time will go down in history as a time that the Christian church and the Christian community and Christian people rose up and shared their faith. All of us. All of us sharing and handing down the treasure of our faith to our children and to our neighbors and to the world to be light, and to be hope, and to be life for others. Amen.
as we are not doing that tonight, we again uh, encourage and remind you that this church and the ministry of this church um, depends on your generous giving. So there are ways to give online. Go to grace.dawson.org. Um, there is a give app there, or give a tab there, excuse me. And then there's also an app called Give Plus. Um, if you uh, subscribe to that app, then you can just log in there and give through that way. And of course, you may mail in your checks uh, to either Grace or Providence Valley Lutheran Church.
that passes all understanding, and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 